When you're looking at an adaptive approach, it really was about how do we create something brand new and bring it to life at the same time of incorporating everybody's thoughts and everybody's needs and everybody's concerns and being able to adapt and weigh how all of it can make one project come alive. If we come across one area and there's a nice big old tree that we are able to micro root around, we've absolutely done that. So it's just shifting the pathway over slightly. So as you bike or stroll or hike along the trail, you'll be able to just see a little shift in alignment. Immediately ahead of the tree falling, we walked ahead with teams. It was one last look to make sure we're avoiding any major trees, to make sure there weren't any bear dens nearby that weren't identified or wetlands or pockets of amphibian breeding habitat. So it was that last chance to go through and just make those micro adjustments of the trail. And then other times we're right in there and we're doing the amphibian and fish salvage. So right in the creeks with nets and we're trying to get animals out right before a crew moves through an area. We're generally looking for any kind of material culture left behind. It could be anything from indigenous site to early European contact, shipwrecks, early homesteaders, early resource procurement. There was gold mines here um, back in the late 1800. The archaeologists, we have a very specific role and that's for the scientific data um, and recording in a certain manner for Parks Canada. The First Nations monitors, their role is to communicate a part of the history and heritage that we don't have access to through material cultures, so ethnographic history, stories from elders. The Indigenous communities and the First Nations monitors, they have the most intimate relationship with the land and the area since they've been here since time immemorial. The role largely in the past has been left out, so the engagement in this project and the involvement in every level and stage of the project has been amazing in a way we want to see this kind of work move forward in the future and with other projects. There's many, many, many things that our ancestors did with the cedar. They used it for their clothing. They used it for making ropes. You know, for their canoes or when they went whaling, we, we depend on cedar a lot. So we have to really be careful when we're doing these things. Like, you know. So all this was done with the utmost honor and respect. It's been about three years in the making and walking past every single big tree and every single wetland, every single stream and every single unique pocket of forest. And I'm, I'm definitely excited to be able to bike it myself, but also have a bunch of people from all over the world come and use this trail and see these really unique habitats that otherwise they were just driving past. <laughs>